So one of the most well-known and well-used quotes in the world relating to change comes from Albert Einstein, who said that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. I'd like to build on that definition by saying that it's also, and more importantly, my mind, thinking the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. So why am I telling you this now? In simple terms, we're impacting on our world in a way that's unsustainable. And current action and leadership thinking isn't changing that. If we want to leave a world that is prosperous and enjoyable for our future generations, then we need to change not only what we're doing, but how we're thinking about it. In fact, changing mindsets might be the single most important action that we can take right now. We've evolved to a level of intelligence and consciousness where we have very few natural predators, the most prominent ones being ourselves and time. The Earth is in no rush to repair any damage that we impart on it. If it takes millions of years to regenerate and repair, then that's what it will do. What we need to decide is, are we going to continue to be part of this ecosystem or not? So we have two things to focus on. We have ourselves and we have time. And we have the amazing human intelligence and awareness as our tools for survival. My question is, is surviving enough? Or do we want to try and create a future where we can actually thrive together? So I'd like to offer you three ideas today that will fundamentally change the way that we, react, we interact with and sustain the environment and each other. Each of them will require significant mindset change across cultures. But I believe that if we can work together collaboratively with curiosity and imagination to find ideas around these changes, then we can change the world and future-proof it. So the first thing I'd like to talk to you about is empowerment. Does it seem insane to you that we're constantly fighting for the equal rights of women at the same time as educating our children with social stereotypes that perpetuate inequality? We teach our boys to be masculine and our girls to be feminine. We tell our boys to not cry and to be the man of the house. And we tell our girls not to be too bossy and aggressive. And actually, the term to be like a girl has become derogatory and it's been used to suppress emotions in our boys so that they no longer know how to deal with their feelings. Low self-esteem and lack of confidence is common in women around the world, and anxiety, depression, and stress is on the increase in men. So the first idea I'd like to offer you is that we can create cultures and communities that are empowering for all, where there's an equal balance of masculine and feminine leadership energies. By educating and inspiring our young people that they can bring their whole selves authentically to everything that they do and go beyond just seeking equality. We have an amazing opportunity with our children to change the current mindset and to create a new society where the topic of equality isn't even something that, that's there to be discussed. By empowering them to be authentic and not limiting their potential, we can work with them to create a new world. Joseph Jobert said, to teach is to learn twice. If we can empower our young people to embrace balance, then maybe we can reignite the deep knowing in us that understands that balance is one of the most important things that we can do. The second thing I'd like to talk to you about is innovation. So Einstein's theory of insanity really resonates with me when I'm working with co corporate, co corporate clients on the subject of innovation, especially in Japan. How can organizations expect to proactively create market demand through inspirational products when they're using the same methods over and over again to research and develop new ideas and products? I've been told many times that Japan is a risk-averse culture and to some extent, this is true. But as I stand here today, I see an amazing opportunity to tap into new creativity if we can let go of that self-limiting belief. If you're constantly told that you're risk-averse and conservative, 
then this will become a self-fulfilling prophecy and your creativity will diminish. If you're constantly told that you have limitless imagination and possibility, then your creativity will increase. Can you see how the difference is in those words and the energy that it creates? Everything in this room was once impossible, from the microphone that I'm wearing to the phones that we all have. And it took somebody with imagination and curiosity to step outside of what people thought was possible and dare to create their dreams and ideas into our current reality. So I say, let's create a paradigm shift where creativity, imagination and play becomes paramount to organizational performance. Let's step into a childlike step a childlike stage of limitless potential when we're thinking about how we can sustain this life on the planet. Anyone that's worked with children knows that they have the most amazing imagination and surprising ideas about things because they have limitless potential. Consumerism is a necessary part of our current reality but is unsustainable. So let's ask our children to teach us about how we can future-proof our organizations and our world. To be truly innovative, we also need to embrace diversity. And organizations that have diversity in their innovation teams and around their board tables are much more likely to understand what the seven billion unique people on this planet might want and how to create and sustain that. Joseph Campbell created the concept of following your bliss. And what that means is to find out what you love doing and are passionate about and do more of it. If we can encourage our people in our organization to authentically unlock their talents and bring their passions in a way that's not limited, then the world would change. Following your bliss leads to happiness and balance in work and life. I'd like to see us create a new kind of organization, one that unlocks the true potential in individuals and sees them as valued contributors rather than just employees. An organization that goes beyond job descriptions and performance based on quantity and instead embraces true potential and unique talents and looks at quality ideas and solutions. I want to talk to you about competition as the third thing. And doesn't it seem insane to you that we live in a world that is fueled by a constant need to be bigger, better, faster, and stronger? The list goes on. I want to be a bit controversial now and talk to you about Darwin's theory of evolution, which is all about the survival of the fittest and promotes competition at fundamental levels in every part of our culture. In fact, I believe that it's theories like Darwin's that actually have made us create a patriarchal and masculine society that's focused on dominating and conquering, when actually, everywhere you look in nature, this is only on a micro level. On a macro level, nature is filled with competition and collaboration, which is required for survival and balance. We are the only species in our ecosystem that's not working in collaboration with our natural habitat and the other species that also belong to it and need it. It's the thought that we're separate and in constant competition that creates a destructive mindset. And this is what we're seeing happening to our ecosystem as I stand here. It's collaboration that creates harmony and the understanding that every single living thing relies on every other living thing for survival. I'm sure everybody in this room knows what would happen to a world if we had no bees. All of the plants that the bees pollinate would disappear, the animals that eat those plants, and so on up the food chain to us. Our ecosystem is delicate and we need to be really careful with it. We're already seeing the devastating effects of, of our impact on it. We're only top of the food chain because we have the intelligence to create weapons that are required in a competitive world. But if we were to change our mindsets to collaboration and to use that intelligence to find our balanced place in the ecosystem, everything would change. So I'd like to leave you with this thought. If we could create cultures and communities that were empowering for everybody and tap into imagination and creativity in a way that's inclusive and swap, collaboration, swap competition for collaboration, no, 
swap collaboration for competition, then we can work together to truly, rule, to, to truly change the world. It's by questioning what we've always been told by, to be true, in conjunction with releasing our self-limiting beliefs and fears, that we will find that our thoughts change. And then we will see a shift in our mindsets, and ultimately our actions will change from ones that are perpetuating a cycle of insanity to a cycle of collaboration and abundance, which will emerge as a new way of thinking and acting. Thank you for listening.